What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to start working with nextout.js. Nextout is a complete open source authentication solution for Next.js applications. Nextout is designed to work with any OAuth service. It supports OAuth 1.0 versions and 2.0. It also provides built-in support for many popular sign-in services such as Apple, GitHub, GitLab, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon Cognito, and many others. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate this solution with Twilio SendGrid to set up passwordless sign-in for an Next.js application. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Here is our Next.js application. This is the index page. And if we click here on this link, we're going to access the shops page where we show the list of items that we get from Strapi CMS. Actually, these items. And we are using Strapi's GraphQL API for that. I'm going to put the link to a video here where I show you how to set up GraphQL with Strapi and Next.js. So going back to our application here, we don't require any kind of authentication. So the idea is to set up a password sign-in strategy with nextout.js to only allow access to authenticated users. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's install and set up nextout.js. Okay, let's stop the server. And first we need to install the next out library. So this is npm install dash dash save. And this is next out. Okay, now that we installed the next out library, we need to add a new API route. So here we need to go to pages. We need to create a new folder. This is API. And we need to add another folder here. This is auth. And within this folder, we need to create a new file. And this is a square brackets, three dots. And this is next auth.js. So here we need to initialize next auth. So we need to set the options. So we're going to create a constant for that. And here within this options object, we are going to pass two things, the providers. In our case, we're going to pass the email provider that will be an SMTP server that we're going to set up with SendGrid. And then we need to pass the database connection. We are going to use MongoDB. This is required to implement this password signing strategy. So this is providers. Here we can pass Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and many others. In this case, we are just going to pass an email provider. So this is providers dot email. And I'm going to import the providers from the next out library. So this is import providers from, and this is next out slash providers. Okay, and here we need to pass a few options. First, we need to pass the server connection details. So this is server, this is another object. And here we need to pass the host. In this case, we're going to use an environment variable. We're going to call it process.m. And this is email server host. The same for the port. So this is port and this is port. And then we need to also pass the authorization details to send emails using this SMTP server. So this is out. And here we need to pass the user and the password. So this is user. Again, process dot and dot. And this is email server user. And we're going to pass also the password. So this is pass. And here this is password. Okay, another thing we need to pass here is the from email address. So here this is from. And this will be another environment variable. This is process.env. And this is email from. And we also need to set the 
database connection here. So this is database. The next auth library is going to use the database to store the tokens for the authentication. This is process dot end dot and this is database URL. Here I'm going to use MongoDB, but we can also use MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, or SQLite. And here we need to set up these options to the next out service. So this is export, default, and here this is a Lambda function where we receive the request and the response. And here this is next out. And we pass three things. We pass the request, we pass the response, and then we pass the options. And that is it for the API route. Now, if we go here to the underscore app file, here we need to pass the provider. So let's import first the provider component from the next library here. So this is import. This is provider from, and the library is next out slash client. And here we are going to return this component, but is going to be within the provider component. So this is provider where we are going to pass the session. So this is session and this is page props dot session. I'm going to close the provider tag here and that's it. Okay, now let's set up these environment variables that we have here. So I'm going to copy those names really quickly. Okay, first we're going to set up the SMTP server. We are going to use Twilio SendGrid for that. So let's go to SendGrid's administration panel. Here we need to go to email API and here we need to click on integration guide. And here we need to go to the SMTP relay option. And we're going to set up an API key that will allow us to connect our application to the SMTP server using these parameters. Okay, here I'm going to call this next out API key. I'm going to click on create key. So we successfully created our API key and these are the settings that we need to set in our environment variables. So first we have the host name for the SMTP server. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. We have the port, we're going to use 465. We have the user, that is API key. And we have the password. I'm going to grab the value from here and I'm going to paste it here. And email from, I'm going to use info at pragmaticreviews.com. This is an email that I already verified in SendGrid. Let me show you what it is. We need to go to settings. We need to go to sender authentication. Here we have the email that I'm going to use as the from email, info at pragmaticreviews.com and is verified as you can see here. Let's go back. And now let's set up the database URL. I'm going to use MongoDB and Docker for that. So let's go to the terminal. Let's run MongoDB using a Docker container. So this is Docker run minus D. And the name of our database will be next DB. We're going to add the port mapping. We're going to use the default port for Mongo. Again, 27017. And we're going to pass two environment variables. Mongo init db underscore root underscore username. And this will be next. And the same for the password. It's Mongo init db root 
password. And this will be next, just to keep it simple. And the image name is Mongo. Let's run this. Okay, I, for I forgot to add minus E here. Let's run this again. And now it's going to pull the image and start the MongoDB database. Okay, let's clean this. And let's check that our MongoDB is up and running. Docker PS. And yes, the MongoDB database is up and running. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And here, let's test the connection to the database. So this is MongoDB. And this is the user is next. The password is next. The host is localhost. This is the port. The name of the database is nextdb. And here we need to pass outsource equals admin. Okay, and now if we go here, yeah, we're gonna see the nextdb database here. Great, I'm going to copy the connection string and I'm going to paste it here. And here we have all the environment variables that we need to set up our passwordless sign-in strategy with next out. Let's close this and let's go to the index page. Okay, here in the index page and also in the shops page, we are going to use a React hook provided by nextout.js that will allow us to access the session data so we can check that session object and either present a sign-in button if the user is not authenticated or present the information that we want to present to authenticated users and a button to sign out. So this is session loading. And this is the hook provided by next out. That is use session. And here automatically imported that hook here. Okay, and now based on the session element, we are going to present different options to the user, either to log in, to log out, show some specific parts of the application, etc. Okay, so if the user is not logged in, we are going to present the login button. So so here we can put something like you are not signed in. Let's use an H1 for this. And then we can add a button close this element and here we can add a button so this is button and here we need to set the on click property to the button and we can use a special element provided by next out that is sign in so this is sign in and as you can see here it's going to import it directly here let's add a label to the bottom this is sign in Okay, that's the case where the user is not authenticated. So now let's add the case where the user is already logged in. Session. Okay, I'm going to close this element. I'm going to remove this. And here I'm going to add the user that is actually authenticated. So we we'll grab this, and this will be something like signed, signed in as, and here we can access the session object, session.user.email. So here we present what is the mail of the user that is authenticated, and after that, at the end, we can add the sign up button here. So this is another special element provided by next out that is sign out. And here we can say sign out. Okay, that's it for the index page. For the shops page, we're going to need to use the same React hook. So I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to import it. And we're going to show this list of shops if there is a session available. So I'm going to add that condition here. And I'm going to close that element here. 
and if there is no session available I'm going to copy the same code that we have here so I think a better strategy for this would be creating a component so that we can import it into multiple pages for now I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to duplicate that code but this is not the best practice actually okay so if the user is not logged in we're going to show the sign in button and if the user is already logged in we're going to show the list of shops and we are going to present the sign out button so I'm going to copy that code from here and I'm going to paste the sign out button here and there is another place where we need to validate the session that is the get server side props function so here we're going to use an special function provided by next out that is the get session function so here this is const session equals to get session and we need to pass the context so we need to declare the context here and we need to pass this in here and here instead of calling the GraphQL API we can avoid that by checking the session so if it is no session available we don't perform any server calls so here if there is no session available we are going to return an object actually the props that we need to pass to the component will be empty so this is props and this is an empty object before running the application I'm going to install a library for MongoDB that's required for next out to use that database so this is npm install MongoDB okay now let's build and run our application to test our passwordless login so this is npm run build let's clean this up and now let's run the application npm run dev okay let's go to the browser okay and here we get this message you're not signing in and we have this button to sign in so I'm going to click on sign in and here we can enter an email to sign in using this passwordless strategy I'm going to use this email reviews pragmatic at gmail.com so I'm going to add that email here and I'm going to click on sign in with email and here we get this message that says check your email a sign in link has been sent to your email address so let's go to the inbox and yes we got this email I'm going to open this email and I'm going to click on sign in and this link is going to generate a token that is going to automatically log me in as, and as we can see here I'm signing in as reviewsproblematic at gmail.com and here we can sign out or we can click here on this link and access the list of shops I'm going to do that let's close this and as we can see here we get the list of shops and here I can sign out so I'm going to sign out and I'm going to stay in the same page but in this case I don't have a session available so I'm not logged in here so I'm going to sign in again I'm going to click here on sign in and again I need to enter my email I'm going to use reviews pragmatic at gmail.com I'm going to click on sign in with email I'm going to check my email again again I got a new email with a new link I'm going to click on sign in I'm going to close this and now again I get access to the shops page so here if we go to the console if you go to application and we go to cookies we're going to see that we have this session token and if we go to the database and if we go to the next db database i'm going to refresh and we're going to see that we have sessions we have this session and this value this session token is the same value that we get here we can also see another collection here the users collection where i have the email that i used for the authentication that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel and I see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.